let's go back to our example x plus y to the fourth. We'd like to multiply that out. And again, I'm going to think of it in terms of a column. So I'm just going to list out each one of these individually. And let's think about it a little more abstractly than close this time. Let's say at each one of these four, I have to choose either an x or a y. So I'm going to choose either the left or the right term. So for example, I could choose left, left, right, left, and that would be x, x, y, x. And that turns out to be x cubed y, because I've got three x's, that's x cubed, and one y, that's just y. Or I could go with right, right, left, left, that would be y, y, x, x. I would get two x's, two y, so it would be x squared, y squared. Or I could go with left, right, left, left, I would get x cubed y again. Notice that I got the same term, x cubed y, in two different ways. So what I'd really like to do is every possible combination of left and right is what I want to list out, and then add those all together, and then I'll have x plus y to the fourth. This should look a little bit familiar with the problem we just did, so hopefully that'll help you out in just a moment. What that should remind you of is our Qbert problem, where we were asking how many ways can he reach a particular square. And his left and right jumps correspond to choosing left or right terms in our algebra right here. So what we're going to do is solve the Qbert problem and the algebra simultaneously. Each one of these rows corresponds with Qbert making a single jump. So his first jump, either left or right, corresponds with picking a left or right term right here. And then his second jump is the same thing as the second term. So we're going to get all the way down to here with his jumping. So this is where we're trying to figure out our numbers. For example, if you chose the left term, the right term, the left term, and the right term, so that would be two x's and two y's, or x squared, y squared, Qbert would land right here. That would be left, right, left, right. What we're really interested in is this row right here. So let's go back to Pascal's triangle and just pick out the row of interest right here, just that one. That's the only one we need. So we'll list that one out and then figure out what the numbers are. And we're going to use these to figure out what x plus y to the fourth is. First, Cuber can jump all the way to the left. And there's only one way of doing that. And that's the same thing as choosing the left term all four times. That gets us x to the fourth, and there's only one way of doing it. Or he could go left three times and right once. And that's the same thing as choosing three left terms and one right term. There's four ways of doing that. And that gets us x cubed, because there's three x's, and a single y term. The next one over, two lefts and two rights, that gets us x squared and a y squared. And there's six ways of reaching this position right here. The next one, single left, three rights, there's four ways of reaching that position, and that gives us x, y cubed. And then finally, if Qbert moves all the way to the right, that's four right terms in a row, and that's y to the fourth. And there's only one way of doing that. Put all this together, you have a single x to the fourth, four of these x cubed y terms, six of these x squared y squareds, for these xy cubes, and a single y to the fourth power. Let's try a slightly more complicated example. I want to raise 2x minus y to the third power, but before I start doing that, we're going to put the 2x in parentheses and the negative y in parentheses. So it becomes an addition problem by doing that, and these two are contained in parentheses. That's going to be very helpful, as we'll see in a moment. We also need to use Pascal's triangle again. In this case, we're choosing three terms, so it's like Hubert's making three jumps. So the fourth row is what we want, the 1, 3, 3, 1. When we go left three times, there's only one way of doing that, and we get three of those 2x terms. Going left twice and right once, we have three ways of doing that. Left, left, right. There's three ways of reaching that, and we end up with two 2x two terms and a single negative y term. Going left once and right twice, that gives us a single 2x term, two of the negative y's, and there's three ways of doing that. And finally, 
if we choose the right term three times, so it's like we go right, 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 we have only one way of doing that, and that gives us three of the negative y's. Now, the parentheses right here indicates that this cubed power is applying to the 2 and to the x, as you see down here. So we need to be very careful with our parentheses. It's not 2x cubed, it's 2 cubed x cubed, and that applies for all of these. So for the next one, it's 2 squared x squared and a negative y. And then notice right here, negative y squared becomes y squared. The negative actually cancels because a negative times a negative is a positive. And really, whenever we have an even exponent, the negative is going to go away. Whenever we have an odd exponent, like the last term right here, the negative is going to stay put. So you have to be very careful when you're multiplying. And if there's a negative, the even powers will make the negatives go away. The odd powers will make the negative stay put. Overall, our pattern ends up being positive, negative, positive, negative. And that applies whenever we have the second term be negative. Put all this together, and we notice that we have a slightly more complicated expression because for this one, we have a 3 and a 2 squared. So we're going to have to combine those numbers together for our final answer. Here we have a 3 and a 2. And working all that out, we get 8x cubed minus 12x squared y plus 6xy squared minus y cubed. I have one more puzzle to finish things off, and I'm not going to answer this one in the video. So if you're stumped, you'll have to check Google or ask a friend or something along those lines. I want to know what the 10th term of the expansion of 3a minus b to the 100th power is. What I mean by that is if we go back to the problem we just solved with 2x minus y to the third power, when we expanded it, the first term was 8x to the third. The second term was negative 12x squared y. The third term was 6xy squared. And the fourth term was negative y cubed. Now, it's not really expected that you have to write out all 101 terms of 3a minus b to the 100th power. There has to be a shortcut way to figure out what the 10th term would be. That's what the puzzle is.